Well, Brett Kavanaugh made it onto the Supreme Court. He was sworn in today. And yet the attacks on him, which were without precedent, have made it likely impossible for him or his family to lead a normal public life for some time, maybe ever. No such restrictions, you'll notice, exist for Bill Clinton, though. He and his wife Hillary are going on tour. They're not rich enough. They would like to be much richer, and they think you can help. They'll be visiting 13 cities in the next seven months to host a series of what they're calling conversations about what else? Themselves. You want to go and pay homage to them? Of course you do. Tickets to the first event in Las Vegas cost a mere 70, 72 bucks. That's the cheapest. Mark Stein is an author and columnist. He'll be first in line for the conversation tour. He joins us tonight. You going to this, Mark? Uh, I'm actually rather disturbed, Tucker, that a, uh, a, a remarkable number of stops on this tour are Canadian cities. And I don't know whether that's a great insult to my native <laughs> land. If they, they feel a bit like one of these superannuated rock groups uh, that are still big in Japan. Uh, that uh, it, it's, it's like that kind of thing. And I wonder... Grand Funk wonder, Railroad. Yeah. Yeah, something, something like that. Still, uh, Grand Funk Railroad is still big in Taiwan and uh, Germany. But it, it's, it's uh, interesting, after hearing these Democrats talk about toxic masculinity, uh, this is actually the toxin in the form of Bill Clinton going, I mean, I don't know how you get the toxin in the masculinity, uh, for, for one thing, but I'm pretty sure that however you do it, Bill Clinton's in on the secret. And that would actually be something uh, quite interesting to know about. But he won't be doing anything like that. It'll be bland, insipid Clinton Foundation type speeches, yes. uh, except that they've run out of Saudi princes and Kazakh warlords uh, willing to pony up the big bucks. So they've got to take the act on the road. It'll be the blandest mush ever served. Mm. Mm. You spent your childhood being educated in an island nation that gave birth to this country, Britain. And so I want to ask you about this story that emerged today. So the former astronaut American Scott Kelly learned the hard way how dangerous it is to praise anybody born before 1985. Yesterday on Twitter, he posted this quote. One of the greatest leaders of modern times, Sir Winston Churchill said, in victory magnanimity, I guess those days are over. So for the crime of praising Churchill, he was inundated with criticism from users who denounced Churchill as an imperialist, racist, genocidal, warmonger, whatever. He bowed to them and responded to, quote, educate myself further on his atrocities and racist views. Whoa, mm. he's been re-educated. What does this tell us, Mark? Well, I think it tells us the moronization that comes with living in a uh, eternal present tense. Uh, Churchill, yes. it should hardly be necessary to say this, was the indispensable man of the 20th century. He presided over the hinge moment of the 20th century, which is the period between uh, the fall of France in the spring of 1940 and the Germans' insane decision uh, to invade uh, the Soviet Union a, a year later. Right. Uh, that year, when uh, Britain and uh, its empire stood alone, determine the course of the 20th century. And if it hadn't been Churchill, it, I mean, I, I, I hate having to explain this. It's pathetic that one of the few men who's actually got to go up into orbit uh, apparently left his brains out on planet Zongo somewhere. Uh, there is no need to apologize for defending Churchill, sir. You live in the world Churchill made. And if some Twitter ignoramus uh, trying to dr drive you to suicide, because the only point of Twitter is to drive minor celebrities to suicide. If the Twitter mob doesn't know that, get off Twitter. <laughs> Go back into space. You'll meet a less moronic class of person up on planet Zongo. <laughs> you live in the world Churchill created. So with someone who's clearly thought this through, really quick, for the edification mm. of the rest of us, how do we respond when the Twitter mob goes after us for saying something that should be obvious? I think you actually have to shove it down their throats. Uh, th this guy, th these guys are arguing that Churchill was no different from Hitler. No, Churchill was the guy who defeated Hitler when everybody else around him, like the other guy who would have been prime minister, Lord Halifax, wanted actually to make peace and accommodate with him. We are living in an eternal present tense. And an eternal right. present tense means you're eternally a child. You're Taylor Swift. You're just in Bieber. And that's why you can't comprehend Winston Churchill, because he wears long pants, unlike Justin Bieber. <laughs> I knew. 
I knew you'd be the best in that. Mark Stein, great to see you. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Tucker.